Hello and welcome to Homemaking with Joy. I'm Rachel. It's a dreary Saturday morning in April, but we are getting this garden ready. I'm not terribly excited about this part of the gardening season and honestly it's a little bit overwhelming because I still feel like a new gardener but these beds have um, been neglected from the end of last year over winter because I had a baby at the end of last October and so the end of gardening season was pretty much worthless for me. So we need to get in here and clean things up, get things ready for planting. I want to give you a little bit of a tour so you have like a before and then I'll show you what we get accomplished today. So here we are. This is the back corner of our property and my husband's over here working on our new chicken coop. You'll see that video at some point. But we have five raised beds and lots of containers. So we don't ever plan to expand the footprint of this garden, more than likely, um, but I'm just making the most of my space. So here are some like rubber made totes I have. I have flower pots the whole way through, these pots in the middle. Um, so I can fit quite a lot of food in this piece of land. I have a couple of trellises. I really like vertical gardening. So my arch trellis here usually has cucumbers and tomatoes. And then I have a few cattle panels over here as well. Last year they held tomatoes. I'm not sure what they'll have this year. But we have lots of leaves that gather in our yard in the fall. And so we use those as bed cover. Squirrels and things have disrupted them. So we're going to turn those into the soil, top it off with some fresh soil, and then probably add some fertilizer too. As you can see, I laid down black landscaping paper last year, but the wind ripped it up pretty easily. I would like something in these walkways, but I'm not sure what. I was originally thinking the landscaping paper and like wood chips or something to avoid weed growth, because over here, I don't know how much you can see. Those weeds, they're so viney, they're coming up through the bottom of the bed. They're impossible to get rid of. They're just, oh, they're so frustrating. But I don't know, would it be better to just have like weeds and grass in here and then use the, what's it called? Um, weed whacker to take care of it? I don't know. Let me know in your comments, in the comments, what do you have in between your raised beds? The kids are excited to be able to use their shovels and work in the garden with me. Usually that is a big no-no because then they will dig up my plants. But they want to help me turn the leaves into the beds. That'll just be more organic matter that'll decompose. We're gonna put some soil on top. Like I said, I have a couple of fertilizer options that I've accumulated in the past year or so. And oh, and we need to get my green stalk out. My green stalk is a vertical planter that I put in one of the corners to really increase my growing space and that is in the shed. We bought some potting soil for that so we'll fill that up today and get it ready to go. So it is exciting to do it. It's just kind of a lot of work and hopefully we can get it all done while the baby naps. The kids were excited to help me for all of about, I don't know, five minutes before they decided they didn't want to anymore. I was trying to show them how to be a little bit productive to actually turn some soil over, to get some leaves mixed in, um, but that didn't really work, but that's okay. I'm glad I have this sweet footage of my little guy and me working in the garden. He'll grow up with this and it'll hopefully be a good memory for him. My husband and I desire to raise children with good work ethics, and it's important to me that my kids know where their food comes from, what's in it, and how it was grown. So if we don't grow it, there's another farmer out there who will grow it for us, and it's important that we're thankful for all of the people who help to feed us. Even the meat that we purchase in bulk, we know the farmers who raised it, and so I can name the farmer whenever we're eating dinner and thank them for all of the hard work that they put into raising the animal to taking care of it well so it can also feed us well. Plus, when they're in the garden with me and they see all the steps necessary to grow our food, they're very excited about it and willing to eat it. I found some carrots that had overwintered and the boys were very excited to pull them out of the ground. Now that the leaves are turned into the soil or taken out of my garden, I came up to the carport to grab some compost. I got, I think, four bags of this compost at Tractor Supply, and so I'm loading it up into the wheelbarrow to take it out to the garden. 
The soil was really clumpy as you probably saw and so I thought I could mix up this compost in the wheelbarrow so it would be finer, easier to work with and then put in the garden. It felt really nice in my hands. It's just so great to get my fingers dirty again but woo, it was heavy. I know that intentional exercise is a good thing for our bodies but I sure feel like I get a lot of movement in my day-to-day -day life, running after two toddlers, holding a baby, moving this wheelbarrow, digging in the garden, <laughs> trying to dump the wheelbarrow in this space. Oh, I did not feel graceful. And unfortunately, it didn't even work the way I hoped to. The soil was fine coming right out of the bag. I didn't have to break up any clumps. It was nice to work with. So, uh, I did it this time with the wheelbarrow, but subsequent trips, I just picked up the bag of compost, brought it to the bed, cut it open, and dumped it right there, and that ended up being easier. But that's how you learn. You gotta try it one way, and then you figure it out as you go. It's great to see this black soil going in my beds. This bed will hold tomatoes, potatoes, broccoli, and spinach, I think. So grateful for that good nutrition in my soil to grow us nutritious food. Time to go get some more compost and do it all again. What you're seeing here is about a week after the previous clips and I'm laughing because clearly the temperature was extremely different. The first videos I had a sweatshirt and pants and boots and here short sleeve shorts and sandals. It felt so good. It felt like summer. It was a false summer because we're back to cooler weather but it was great to be out in the garden and get some things planted. This is my first year growing onions. I grew all these onions from seed and I'm very proud of them. I grew some red onions, candy onions, and yellow onions. We will see how they do. Everything in the garden is a learning experience and it's really fun to try new things. And so this year, onions are one of them. They were pretty simple to get started and pretty much the only thing I started indoors this year. Thanks to some life overwhelm, this is all I got to. I'll end up purchasing my tomato starts and a couple of other things. I did use the milk jugs and winter sow some things in my backyard, so the broccoli seeds or plants that I'll plant are from that, but kept it pretty low-key this year. Thankfully, I enjoy the gardening and I don't have to pinch pennies so much that I need to start all my own plants and I can buy them from a nursery. Buying the tomato starts will still be less expensive than buying all the tomatoes that I would preserve over the summer. Tomatoes are one of my main crops, my main staples, because I make and can all of our family's spaghetti sauce, pizza sauce, salsa, and just like regular tomato sauce for the year. It's amazing how much you can grow in this small space. Besides the onions here, I will be planting potatoes, broccoli, and spinach, like I mentioned earlier. Lettuce and my green stalk, blueberry plants, strawberry plants are already in, plus green beans and carrots, zucchini, pumpkins, and possibly watermelon and cantaloupe too. We are losing daylight, so I am working quickly. My son and I went to the shed to grab the green stalk. It is awesome. I got it as a Christmas present two years ago, I think, and it's amazing how much I can grow in this really small footprint because it's so tall and all the pockets in it, the way it works is just great. The Green Stalk Company recommends filling it with potting soil and you refresh it every year because a lot of the nutrition in the soil can be depleted as the water runs through it, but it grows some really great vegetables in the pots. Here I am filling up each layer at a time. You wanna put enough potting soil in that it comes up level with the pocket opening. And it's just a little complicated with this gigantic bag, but we do it. 
If you don't have a green stock, and especially if you're limited on space, I highly recommend them. I don't have an affiliate with them or anything, but I really like them. And I can see in the future, if I want more growing space, I would probably get another green stock or two instead of making my garden bigger. We wanna keep our yard for the kids to play in, but I can grow so much in one of these green stocks. They have different options and sizes and all sorts of things. So you might see more green stocks in my garden in the future. The blue tray that I just inserted is part of the watering system. You just put water in the top of the green stalk and it evenly trickles the whole way down. It's really cool how that works. It waters from the inside out, so it encourages the root growth toward the middle of the pot, giving the roots plenty of room to grow and expand, but just the vegetables come out the side. By rotating each tier, they click into place and then the weight of the soil and everything in the green stalk hold it down. Again, there's the watering tray that I'll stick in the middle and then the next layer just goes on top. Just press it together and that's it. Super easy to assemble. I ran out of daylight last night to show you what we accomplished, but while we still have some daylight today and no rain, I want to show you what I got done and wrap up this video with a uh, sort of after or where we're starting at the very beginning of gardening season. My green stock is full of potting soil and ready for greens. I really like this for lettuce, for spinach, for kale. I think I'm going to try carrots in it this year. I've done broccoli in it in the past. It's just a great way to add a lot of gardening space to my garden without increasing the footprint because we don't want to make it bigger, but I can add things like the green stalk, like pots here, Rubbermaid totes to really increase how much food I can produce in this space. I got all my onions planted. This is my first time growing onions, so we'll see how this goes. This bed has a row of broccoli, some spinach, and another row of broccoli. It's looking a little sad right now, but with all the rain we're supposed to get, it should perk up. And then down this way, I planted potatoes in this part of the bed, and then this trellis will probably be for tomatoes. My blueberries have continued to grow since the last time I took a video. It's very exciting. The boys are really excited to harvest the fruit from this. I just think it's beautiful. And last but not least, the strawberry bed is really perking up. The leaves are pointing up toward the sun and I'm pretty sure I need to thin this out. I didn't take very good care of it last year because I was busy and overwhelmed, but hopefully we'll get some strawberries this year. And that's where we are. I have like two and a half more beds to fill. I have some big totes to fill. I have some plans. I have some more seeds, but it's actually starting to rain right now. So I'm going to go inside, get my camera inside and let these plants soak up the rain and hopefully start growing. It's officially the beginning of the gardening season and I'm very excited. Thank you for joining me as I prepped the garden, as I get started this year, and I will share updates of how things are growing throughout the growing season. Thanks friends. Because it took me ages to edit the last parts of the video, I have an update for you. Check this out. Ah, look at it. Isn't it beautiful? My family surprised me for my birthday and purchased this playground tan bark something or other. My husband laid down landscaping paper and then my in-laws and family laid it all out for me. It's a nice thick layer and so now the weeds are at bay and it is beautiful. I just love how it looks. It's so much more peaceful to come out here and it's not just like junky and covered in weeds. Plus it's about it's like a month later than when my first clip came out at the beginning of this video. So let me show you one month's worth of growth in the garden because it's just so exciting.